This is McFly Angler. starts now. To start, we are going to have to make two dubbing brushes. And if you don't have a dubbing brush table, then there are a few brushes you can buy that would work. And I'll leave those links in the description section. But they do cost a lot. So I highly recommend this dubbing brush table made by Oasis Benches. It's one of the best on the market at the price point. I will link to the table below as well. For the first brush, we will need EP fiber, or this better priced Congo hair from Fly Tires Dungeon in white. Also some white craft fur, and make sure it's the extra select stuff. And some flashy dubbing like this Starburst, also by Fly Tires Dungeon in pearl. Now you have all seen me make dubbing brushes before, so I will not spend too much time on building the brush. And if you're new to the channel, I will link to a video about making dubbing brushes in the description section. But basically just lay your base material which in this case is the Congo hair, I cut into about one and a half inch lengths. Then your craft fur, sticking out a little past the Congo hair. And then on top of all that, some strands of the pearl starburst stubbing also cut into about one and a half inch strands. Then spin it up, brush it out, cut it from the table, and there you have it, a brush ready to tie four to five of these flies. Now for the second brush. Still using the white Congo hair as the base, but to stiffen up the brush a bit, I am using this. It's basically super hair, just in bulk without the fancy packaging. Also, we will be using more Starburst, but this time in the holographic silver color. Okay, create the brush just like before, but make the super hair fibers about the same length as the Congo hair. And there we go, two brushes. The first one is softer and used for the back to blend in the tail. And the second is stiffer and used to bulk up the head and push more water. Now to tie the fly. I am using a beefy saltwater hook since this will be a mullet pattern and used in the salt water. And these Gamagatsu SL11s in size two will work great. Place the hook securely in your vise. For thread, I am using Vivas 140 Power Thread in gray. Start your thread behind the eye of the hook and bring it down to about halfway down the hook shank. Then come up to about an eye length shy of the eye of the hook and then back down and up multiple times to form a thread base to lay the dumbbell eyes on. And with your thread about two eye lengths shy of the eye of the hook. For dumbbells, today I'm using a red painted lead dumbbell in the medium size. Place the dumbbell on your thread bump and then tie it down with X wraps and under wraps. Then bring your thread back slightly into the bend of the hook and then back up to the start of the bend. Now we need some craft fur. Cut a small section of fur from the hank and then clean it up by pulling out all the under fur. To make it easier to tie in, I like wetting the tips of the fur. Now measure this to extend out about two times the hook shank length off the back of the hook and then tie back up to just behind the dumbbell eyes and snip off the waist. Make a couple more wraps to clean up that section and end with your thread right about at the hook point mark. Now put some super glue on the dumbbells to keep them from spinning. We now need some ostrich hurl. Cut off four strands of hurl from the plume. Oops, I got a few extra here. 
and then align the tips the best you can. And then wet them to make the tie-in easier. Measure out the hurl to extend slightly past the craft fur tail, and then tie it in with a couple tight wraps. Back to the start of the craft fur tail, and then back up to the dumbbells. Instead of grabbing your scissors, you can just tie back down onto the hurl and then break it off at the tie-in point. Now we need another clump of craft fur, about the same size as the last. Tie this in, extending out about the same length as the last craft fur clump. Trim off the waist and clean up the section, and then bring your thread back to the start of the tail. Now grab the first brush that you made, the one with the craft fur in it. Tie in the brush tag end, and then bring your thread right up to behind the dumbbell eyes. Start wrapping the brush up the hook shank with tight touching wraps, stroking the fibers back with each wrap. Periodically, you will want to brush out the fiber as well to make sure you're not trapping any with the wraps. When you reach the eyes, you can take a bodkin to separate some fibers to get a nice clean tie-in point like so. Then pull back everything and wrap in front of the brush before using wire cutters to cut off the brush. Now you will always be left with a bit of wire sticking up, which is sharp and can cut your thread. So push that back and then wrap up on top of it. Use your bodkin to pick out any trap fibers the brush may have missed. And now take the second brush you made, the stiffer one, and tie it in as well. Make a couple wraps tight against the back of the dumbbell eyes, and then brush it out. Now wrap up over the dumbbell eyes in a crisscross pattern like so. Brush it out once again, and then cross under the eyes then make a few wraps in front of the dumbbells to finish off the fly. Use that bodkin trick once again to get a clean tie-in point. And then pull everything rearward and tie back on top of the brush slightly. Clip off the excess brush and again push down the wire tag. Then make a few wraps over everything to form a small head on the fly and now you can whip finish your fly. To cement the head, I really love this Solarez Ultra Thin Resin. The paintbrush applicator makes it easy to cover the entire whip finish, and it leaves a nice glossy professional look to your fly. It cures hard with a good UV light in just a few seconds. Pull the fly out of your vise and trim it. I like to pull out all the fibers on top of the fly like so, then make an angled trim from the hook eye back, like so. Then I try to match that cut on the bottom of the fly as well. Then I do the same thing on each of the sides. Note that you will want to brush out the fibers before each cut. Clean up the head a bit with a couple more cuts, then make a more straight back cut, shaping the rear of the fly like so around each side. Now we have a good rough shape. Then I go in with my bodkin once again and pick out any trap fibers. Trim off any errant fibers to clean up the body shape. Then I run it underwater and then go in and trim up some more, refining the shape of the fly. Now don't go overboard though with your cuts. Make small ones rather than a couple large ones. You can always cut more off, but you can't put more on. Once you're happy with the overall shape, then place it aside to dry. Once dry, then we will want to color up the top. In this case, I'm mimicking a mullet, so I'm using a medium gray color. These ad markers with their chisel tip make short work of this step. Color just the top of the fly. Remember, this fly will swim hook point up. You might have to trim a few errant strands again after coloring the top, but you are basically done. I tied this fly up for a customer, 
who wanted to get some Clouser minnows to mimic a finger mullet. Mullet have a large, fat head, and I figured the fly should push more water to better mimic a mullet. So I came up with this. It has the same action as a Clouser minnow, but the fat head on it pushes a lot more water. Let me know in the description section what you guys think of this fly, and if you have ever seen anything like it elsewhere. I have not, but it's tough to know about every fly ever created. I would like to hear from you all if this pattern is something you have seen before, and also what you think of it. As you all know, I have gotten you all discounts from both www.risenfly.com and www.dooliesflyfishing.com. Dooley's offers great prices on all of the name brand fly tying materials, and Risen Fly manufactures their own hooks, rods, reels, and other gear for fly fishing. Their products are top quality, and best of all, they are priced very reasonably. Not only are the prices at these two shops great, but like I said, they are offering all of my subscribers a discount. So use McFly at checkout when ordering from either of these shops, and you will get an additional 15% off of their already great prices. I want to also thank all of my patrons who support me. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support this channel and also get some great perks like early access to my videos, participate in live streams, and more. So go to www.patreon.com forward slash angler to sign up today. I also thank all of you who share all my videos with your friends and your continued support by hitting the like buttons and subscribing. Thank you for making these videos possible. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.